And subhanAllah brothers and sisters, over 4,000 years ago, the Prophet Ibrahim made this call. More than 4,000 years have gone by. And every single year, uninterrupted, for the last 4,000 years, the Prophet Ibrahim's call has been responded. And every single year, people are doing Hajj as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to proclaim to the people. The Hajj is the most uninterrupted pilgrimage that has taken place in the history of mankind. The Hajj is the largest pilgrimage that takes place on an annual basis. Think about that. No other gathering on this earth is as large, or I should say no regular gathering, there are irregular gatherings, every 10 years, every 15 years, something happens that breaks the Hajj, but this is a one-off event. In terms of annual gatherings, the Hajj is the number one religious gathering on the face of this earth. And can you imagine when the Prophet Ibrahim made this announcement, not a single creature heard, but Allah said, your job is to proclaim, my job is to find out who's going to respond. My job is to create those people. Can you imagine when he made that cry, not a single creature is in front of him to listen. And now we have a problem about the over quantity of people coming for Hajj, that the government has to restrict the number of people because the call is too much, because there are too many people answering the adhan that Prophet Ibrahim gave to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And notice as well, brothers and sisters, the continuity. Think about that. Think about nothing has ever prevented the Hajj from taking place. Civil war, World War I and World War II, the biggest catastrophes and calamities in the world, never once in the history of this 4,000 years, even in the days of Jahiliyyah before Islam, the pagans did Hajj, did they not? Even in the days of Jahiliyyah, from the time of Ismail alayhi salam, from the time of Ibrahim and his son Ismail, people have been regularly doing tawaf and sa'i and dhikr and dua and prayer and ritual and sacrifice all throughout these 4,000 years. Can you imagine how that promise has been fulfilled when Allah told Ibrahim, your job is to announce, my job is to figure out who's going to respond to that call. And as well, look at what Allah said. They're going to use every means of transportation. And Allah mentioned walking and animals that are typically unfit. Dhamir, ala kulli dhamir. Dhamir means the animals that are weak, the animals that don't have that much muscle, but people will still use them to get to the Hajj. And so if Allah mentioned those two things that are the most difficult to travel on, and that is walking on foot. To this day, brothers and sisters, every means of transport is used to get to the Hajj. To this day, there are people who walk all the way from the farthest lands. There are pilgrims that come from Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, they literally walk to this day. There are pilgrims that take the bus, there are pilgrims that still take their animals. They are peasants and they don't have the means to go in planes or in trains. So they still take their animals and they come for Hajj. And of course there are pilgrims like most of us who will go in fancy airplanes. Every single transportation Allah said, they will come to this house. And where will they come from? يَأْتُونَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ They will come from every corner of the globe. Hajj is not only the largest gathering of humanity on a regular basis, it is also the most internationally diverse. Yes, once every 10-15 years there is a festival that is larger than the Hajj. For example, in Hinduism, there is a festival every 10 years that brings, they say, 7-8 million people, which is double Hajj. This is every 10 years. But even if the quantity is broken every 10 years, okay, look at the people who attend that pilgrimage. They are all from one ethnicity. You cannot compare that with the Hajj. Where people from literally every single nation on earth, all 160 countries are represented in Hajj. Every skin color, every language, every tribe, every people. There is no doubt that Hajj is the greatest gathering of humanity on a regular basis. The most international, the largest. And if this is not a sign of the beauty of this religion, then what else would that sign be? And so Hajj is of the greatest sha'air, of the greatest symbols and signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. And we all know that Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam. 
that our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ya ayyuha nas, kutiba alaykum al-hajj, fa'ajju." O oh people, Allah has prescribed for you that you have to do the pilgrimage. So therefore, do the pilgrimage. Do the pilgrimage. And our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us so many blessings associated with the pilgrimage. He told us that when the person decides to do pilgrimage and he undertakes this journey, he becomes a guest of Allah subhanahu wa taala. That the pilgrim, the Hajj, is a guest of Allah. He told us that when the pilgrim says the talbiyah, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ Each and every creature, each and every rock and stone, each and every animal, each and every tree that hears that لَبَّيْكَ will testify on the Day of Judgment that this man responded to the call of Allah. He told us that when the hujjaj gather together in the plains of Arafat, he told us that when they gather together on the plains of Arafat, Allah Himself comes down to the lowest heavens. And He boasts to the angels and He says, Look at these people who have gathered together. Look at them, tired, dirty, disheveled, hungry. They're not even wearing the regular clothes. They travel from everywhere in order to respond to my call. Hear, Allah says, hear my angels, that I am calling you to testify, to witness that I have forgiven each and every one of them. And our Prophet ﷺ said, Never is shaitan more humiliated than he is on the day of Arafah. Never is he feeling more depressed and more miserable than on the day of Arafah. Why? Because of what he sees of Allah's mercy. And our Prophet ﷺ told us that the Hajj, the one who goes for Hajj, every step that he takes, him or his animal or mount, every step that he takes, he is raised one level and one of his sins is forgiven. And our Prophet ﷺ said that when he was speaking to the Hujjaj, he said that be proud, be happy, because you are following in the footsteps of your father Ibrahim ﷺ. What you're doing is not trivial. You are resurrecting. You are doing exactly what Ibrahim did 4,000 years ago. And he said, for those who are throwing the Jamarat, that as you throw the stones of Jamarat, know that Allah is recording for you. Allah is recording this for you. And He said for those who are trimming, trimming and, and shaving their hairs off, He said, know that for every hair that falls, Allah will forgive your sins. Every hair that falls, Allah will forgive your sins. And He said regarding Muzdalifa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself praises Muzdalifa in the Qur'an. And Allah says, فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَلِ الْحَرَامِ When you depart from Arafat, then stop and remember Allah in the sacred territory. So Allah specifies Muzdalifa, sacred territory, Mash'al al-Haram, وَذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ And praise Him because of what He guided you. And our Prophet ﷺ said that when the person does the final tawaf al-ifadah, that he does the tawaf of hajj, and he does hajj pro properly and perfectly, when he finishes that, that tawaf, the Prophet ﷺ said, it is as if he is as pure as the day his mother gave birth to him. It is as if he is as clean as the day his mother gave birth to him. He has no sins attached to him at all. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said that the true hajj, al-hajj al-mabrur, the accepted hajj, has no reward less than paradise itself. There is no reward. If you do it properly, there's only one reward. There is no monetary amount. There's no darajah given. There's no quantity. It's only one reward. If you do it properly, Al-Hajj Al-Mabrur, لَيْسَ لَهُ جَزَاءٌ إِلَّا الْجَنَّةِ The true Hajj, the proper Hajj that is done, accepted by Allah, it has no reward less than Jannah itself. And that is why going for Hajj is not just a, a blessing, it is wajib, it is fard, it is mandatory. It is something that is of the five pillars of this religion, brothers and sisters in Islam. The blessings are there. There are many other blessings as well. The khutbah does not allow me to give into all of them. But for example, our Prophet ﷺ said, this hajj, this is a type of striving fi sabilillah, jihadun fi sabilillah, in which there's no qital, there's no, there's no hardship. Once a woman came to me and said, O Messenger of Allah, I want to participate along with you in your expeditions. I want to go and be in your expeditions. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Should I not tell you of a striving that is better for you? She said, Yes. So he said, the Hajj is the Jihad for you. Your Jihad is the Hajj. You go and you do the Hajj. And another hadith, he said, Al-Hajj Jihadu Kulli Da'if. That those who are weak, they're not able to do proper striving in the way of Allah. 
their jihad will be going for the hajj. So all of those blessings for the hajj, for the pilgrimage to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not only is, are these blessings there, but our Lord has equated the hajj with the very essence of Islam. That He has said, this is of the pillars of Islam. And then He says, whoever rejects from an kafara, whoever rejects, meaning going for the hajj, that Allah Azza wa Jal will not guide those who have rejected.